Hey, I'm Tyler Weingartner. And I'm Matt Stoltz. So every year with Make Magazine, we do what we call our digital fabrication shootout, which is where we test all the 3D printers, CNC machines, laser cutters, and a number of other machines that allow you to take your digital designs and create physical objects with them. One of the things that really sets our process apart from a lot of other people out there testing 3D printers is how rigorously we test the printers and how we try to have a very scientific method to it. And we're gonna share with you guys how we test. The most rigorous forms of testing we have is for the FDM or filament style printers. And what is the process that we use for testing? All right, so on the table here, we have our set of test models. And the first thing that you're gonna notice about almost every model here, some of them may have fallen off, is there's a sticker on the bottom of every model. And that sticker has an ID number. And the reason for that is, is as the testers are going through every machine and printing every one of these models on every machine, they log everything about the print settings that they're using, the machine that they're using, and what they're printing, and then put a number on the finished print. When the judge goes to later look at the prints and score how well the print came out, the judge only knows the number on the print. They don't know which machine it came off of. This makes our testing entirely blind, so there's no question about, you know, are we friends with the company? Did we like the printer because, you know, we sold the printer back in the past? Anything like that. We are entirely unbiased in our judging. So let's start these off kind of in an order of an importance and how we print them. The very first test that we print is our vertical surface quality test. And this is a thin walled print that has make on the front of it, has some zigzag edges, some rounded edges on the side, and holes in the back. Now, the most important aspect of this really is the text on the front that sticks out and these holes on the back. One of the things that's pretty common and ends up being a problem is uh, what we refer to as ghosting uh, or echoes in a print where the print nozzle itself is, as it's moving along, is leaving traces of a feature in the, the print. So if we look at this make print, we can see that the, the K and the side of the M and all the sides of the letters kind of continue off to the side of the print. They aren't clean where they, they stop. The same can be also seen in the, the circles on the back. We actually see rings around the, the back side. In really bad prints, these will be carried on as banding throughout the rest of the, the print. Uh, sometimes we'll see minor banding even on good ones, but we're really looking for those echoes uh, and how bad those are. And as I'm looking at this one here in, in blue, there's a tiny bit of ghosting you see to the right of the letters, uh, but it's not significant. And on this one, I do see a little bit of that same banding um, here, but there's no ghosting image here. Uh, so it does change the quality of the lines in the areas where the holes are. But otherwise, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that this one scored much higher for this test. That, that is a very high scoring print. Yeah. So what are, the, what are the factors of a printer that yield good results in this versus bad ones? So some of this has to do with the, the backlash on the gears, how tight the belts are, uh, and how well the, the linear motion system works on the machine to make sure that everything is moving very smoothly. Okay, so that's the vertical surface quality test. What's the next one we test for? The next, since we've looked at how things come out on the sides, we're gonna look at how things come out on the top. So that's our horizontal sur surface quality test. And here we have one uh, that was printed and shows some of our errors. Um, so there's three different surfaces that we test on. First, we have an incline, a flat horizontal surface, and then a dome. Uh, when we see breaks in the incline, breaks in the top, or any problems in the dome, that's what we're looking for. This one on the incline and the top surface is pretty good, but the dome has a lot of pocking on it, and we can see the top of the dome doesn't even close. Right, and then again, on this blue one, and I'm suspecting maybe it came from the same machine as the, the vertical surface test, the diagonal has this nice stair step effect to it. Um, it's all very even. Everything's even, everything's closed up. That's the kind of test that we're looking for. Right. Next, we go with, for dimensional accuracy. And we only have one dimensional accuracy print here because it's kind of hard to, to show off some of the others um, uh, and really show, but we'll explain what we're looking for here. Here we have a stepped pyramid. 
and that pyramid uh, we actually take and measure with a set of di digital calipers. The second step up should be exactly 20 millimeters, and if we put a, a set of probes on it, take a couple measurements, go and actually average everything out and see how far off of 20 it actually is. And in the case of this probe here, would this be a, a I mean, we're close to 20, we're a little over um, by a hundredth of a millimeter, a few hundredths of a millimeter. Would that be considered a, a high quality print? That is a high quality print. Yeah. Any, anything under 0.1, we score high, and then it, it goes down from there. Yeah. Um, so continuing on. All right. Uh, next, we have our overhang test. And so here we have kind of a, a, a bad overhang test. It's not one of the worst that we've ever seen, um, but it, it, it shows some of the examples. Uh, the overhang tests start out at 30 degrees, then move on to 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 70 degrees. And what we're looking at is how, at, at what point, at what degree, it starts to not print well on the back. And then does that affect the top surface quality also? Uh, so this one's perfectly fine on the back, but at 60 and 70 degrees, we have a lot of drooping and a lot of looping that's, you know, not a, not a very nice looking print. We want to try to keep that as clean as possible. Now, as a rule, we typically say in 3D printing that anything over 45 degrees probably needs support material, but sometimes you want to be able to push that. So the better off that this print is, the better you're going to do. One thing to keep in mind if you're printing this one at home is to look at how your fan system works in your machine. You may get different results based on which way the model is pointing. So just keep that in mind. All right, so what's this next test that we're looking at here? All right, so our next model is our bridging test, and it checks to see how well you can span a gap between two points. Throughout the entire print, the gaps get wider and wider as it goes up. And we're looking to see, does the material make the gap without having any significant drooping? Or, as is the case of this print, the whole way up, is it a total mess? So, unfortunately, this one probably needs some additional cooling to be able to get it to, to print well as well as uh, probably the slicer itself needs some adjustments to know how to span a gap in a better, better way. Yeah, and here I'm looking at this one, and you know, if you look straight down the edge here, you can see, I mean, especially on this longest span, it's drooping a little bit, but still, I mean, the layers are all incredibly even, and the model is hold up incredibly well overall. Uh, this is a pretty impressive print here. Right. Um, and I would assume that the same qualities that factor into the overhang test weigh in heavily in how this print turns out. They do, although many slicers are actually tuned specifically for overhang, so they need to know to make that, that gap span before they try to do uh, a, a side to side fill. And so it's very important that the slicer is tuned right for overhang. So we're a little bit more than halfway through these test probes. What else are we looking for here? All right, so our next is going to be our negative space tolerance test. And this one is probably the easiest of all of them that we have to score. What we have is uh, five pegs in five holes. Each hole gets slightly larger than the, the previous one. And all you need to do when you get done is just take your thumb and pop them out. Try to push them out of the holes. The more you can pop out, the better your, your printer is at printing uh, tolerances for parts. This is really important for print and place objects that you want to have hinges printed right into the object. The tighter the tolerance that you can get, the less space you have to have between the pieces of the hinge, uh, making it a lot easier to print print and place objects. Okay, so what's next? All right, so next we have our retraction performance test, and this is all in your extruder. This, is, this has to do with heat profiles, retraction lengths, retraction speeds, and really shows you know, how good your machine can make jumps between objects. Now, you can see this one looks like a little dead forest here of uh, uh, all kinds of strings going between the joints. They don't have very sharp tips. Some of them are, are entirely missing their tips. Uh, this, is, this is a pretty bad retraction performance test we can definitely see this is, this is not clean at all. When we compare it to the clean one, which has nice sharp points on it, everything uh, comes up to, to the same level. Uh, we, we can see a little bit of junk here and there across the, the prints, but for the most part, this is really clean. 
Yeah, this one uh, looks as intended, a little, little spiky spike plate. Yeah. Okay, and so we've only just, we just have only a few left. Right. So the next we're going to do is, is our Z-wobble. Uh, so here we, ha we have two, and it's probably going to be the easiest to see this directly up against each other. Um, in my, my left hand, uh, we have a very, very smooth pillar here. And in my right hand, we have something that has, has some wobbles going back and forth against, against each other. This has to do with your actual Z motion. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, how straight and how tight the, the systems are for your, your rods and your nuts for moving your Z axis up and down. And while most of our other tests are scored in a, a zero to five scoring, um, these are the only tests that are scored as either pass fail. So it's either zero points or two points. Um, we have a fail and we have a pass. Okay. Uh, so we only have a few left. Uh, we have this big box here. What is this test for? Okay, so this is one of our newest tests. And one of the things that we listened to you guys out there uh, that said to us was, well, you measure the dimensional accuracy on a small part, and you know if it's even half a percentage off, uh, that's not that big of a deal on a small print, but if it's half a percent off on something that's the full size of the bed, that could be significant. If you have a 200 millimeter bed, that's two millimeter, sorry, that's one millimeter off at half a percent. So we wanted to create something that, that allowed us to measure the full size of the bed. So this kind of actually serves as two points. We can measure it. But we can also make sure that the printer prints pretty close to the full dimensions that they say that it will. Um, so this is just a square, um, pretty basic. Uh, we square it back up when we actually measure it. Um, for as thin as it is, it, it bows a little bit once it comes off, but we square it back up and we take measurements and see how close to the, the original spec size that actually is. Each one of these squares is custom sized to the machine that we're printing it on. We have uh, an open scab library that, that we've created so that we can very quickly run these off. Two more, what's next? All right, so next we have our squareness test. This is another new test for us this year. Um, and this test, actually, we wanted to see how well the bed would, would print objects the whole way around. So kind of like the big bed test, how square is it throughout the entire bed? We've noticed on some printers in the past that they had certain areas where possibly the parts weren't as square as they were in, say, the very center of the bed. So we have five boxes. They print as one, two, three, four, and five within, within the print bed. And we're able to actually go take these afterwards, uh, put a digital angle, angle gauge on each one of them, measure the angles, make sure that everything's nice and 90 or as close to it as we can, and then average out how close to 90 all of the prints across the entire bed are. One last test. All right, so this is a test that we had last year, um, but we've made some changes to it. Uh, actually, the last two years, but we made some changes to it. And this is our support material test. In the past, we had a little mushroom that we tested to see how well we could remove support material, but we wanted to get into that a little bit deeper. And we talked to some people who use support material a lot and said, you know, where are, the, where are your faults? Where do you have problems? And so we made a new support material test. First, I'm gonna show you the good one so you kind of see what's, what lies underneath. So we have actually four sections of this print. So the first section that it will print is a, a totally flat overhang that most of the support material goes down to the bed. Above that, the support material connects between the actual print and the, the next piece up, which again is flat. And then we move over to the other side, which is wavy and bumpy. And again, support material connects to the bed, and then the support material connects to the top piece. And what we're looking for here is how cleanly can we remove that support material? Uh, and in some cases, can we remove the support material at all? This piece, the support material is fused so tightly to the actual print that we, we printed a couple of these and we weren't able to remove the support material without damaging the print itself. Whereas this one, uh, we can see the bumps, we can see the waves, uh, things are pr pretty clean on this, this print. Um, this is what you're looking for, support material, right? You don't wanna have really a lot of remnants of it left behind. You want it 
nice and clean. Right. So if you have a printer at home and you'd like to see how well your printer performs in these tests, check the link down below and we will have a link to where you can download and print out all these test probes on your machine at home. We'll have them up on Thingiverse and Imagine, so keep an eye out. Now as part of our coverage of the testing, we're going to be releasing a series of videos highlighting our favorite machines and the highest scoring machines in every single category of the Digital Fabrication Shootout. So be on the lookout for those. And of course, also be on the lookout on newsstands for Make Volume 60, where you can read all of the reviews and then the in-depth scoring of every single machine that we tested this year. If you have any questions about our test probes or how we score or anything about how we do the shootout, leave a question in the comments below and we'll be sure to get back to you.